What's going on, Charles Botenston? So we're going to be talking about something that, you know, 10 years in the game, 10 years in self-development, and by 10 years in the game, I don't mean approaching women. That's probably about 12, 13 years of, you know, relationships and, and in that kind of game. But this is more in the self-development realm. 10 years. This has to be one of the largest that is, it's outside of foundational principles, but it's very self-aware. Gary Vaynerchuk has talked about self-awareness. This is so foundational and it is so easy to actually catch yourself. This is the thing is that people don't actually want to catch themselves making a wrong decision. Let's just go over two scenarios and then we'll talk about it. First scenario, alarm goes off at 5 a.m. You snooze your alarm. You say, you know what? It's a Friday. It's not that big of a deal. I need to sleep. Goes off 10 minutes later, snooze it again. You say, all right, you know what, 520. Let's, let's get out of bed. Before getting out of bed, you look at your social media feed and you say, oh, this is interesting, this is cool. It's YouTube, go on YouTube, go on Facebook, check your email, check your text messages. Maybe go on Amazon, maybe look around a couple of things, get out of bed. You're a little lethargic, it's now 5.45. You say, wow, well, you know, I've been working out for four straight days, this isn't that big of a deal. So you put on your gym clothes, you walk into the gym, you don't say hi to the person at the door because you're feeling a little bit groggy, you're feeling a little bit tired. Go work out, it's not the hardest workout you've done in a while, but I've been working out for four straight days. It's not that big of a deal. Go into the locker room, talk, no, talk to nobody in the locker room. Go to your, your typical breakfast place, which includes oatmeal and a bunch of other things. You say, you know what, I deserve it. It's a Friday, I've been eating, eating correctly. Go in there, get some cereal, maybe some cornflakes or anything else with milk, put some milk on it. And then, you know, you sprinkle a little sugar on top, not that big of a deal. You go into work, you're feeling, you still feel a little bit groggy, which is weird. You know, I went to the gym, I woke up early and you don't make sales calls. I deserve it. I, I've made five, five, four days of sales calls. It's not that big of a deal. 11 o'clock rolls around, you start getting a little bit hungry. 11.30 rolls around, you say, I'm starving right now. You go out there, so instead of getting a salad, you get a hoagie, a blimpy, uh, a Subway, whatever you want, a uh, hero. Anything with a lot of bread. 2 p.m. rolls around, you're exhausted. You leave work, you, you leave work, get a coffee, you start servicing other business. You really haven't prospected. There's no outbound calls going on. 5 p.m. rolls around, you get a text message from your buddies at the local bar. Hey, listen, why don't I just meet you there? Let's grab a couple of cocktails. I, I you know what? I, my relationship isn't really, you know, good with the the people that I'm dating right now. But yeah, let maybe maybe there will be some girls at the bar. Go to the bar. 7 p.m. You're feeling a little bit buzzed. 9 p.m. You're drunk. You see all these pretty girls and you say, Wow, they're they're looking fantastic. It's a Friday. They're out. They're excited. They're out with their friends. They're having their cocktails. Their first drinks of the night. They look they look stellar. Wow, I'm a little bit drunk. Or you know, I'll talk to them in a bit. Talk to them in your mind. That's what you really want to do. You go to the bathroom. You pass by, and you're like, ah, I'll talk to them later. I'll talk to them later, definitely. Instead of talking to the bartender, you're talking to your buddy about the exact same thing that you've been talking about. You go home, you, you wake up, you're definitely hungover because you stay till 11 p.m. You haven't talked to anyone, so you're feeling really groggy. You have shitty day on Saturday, eating, not going to the gym Sunday, exact same thing Monday. You say, why am I even feeling this way? Other scenario, a little bit longer than what I expected, but 5 a.m. rolls around. Your phone's on airplane mode as in the other scenario, but you don't take it off airplane mode. You don't snooze, you get out of bed. Your clothes are already there from the night before. You pack it into your gym bag. You, your work clothes into your gym bag. You put your gym clothes on. You get to the gym. You say hi to the person at the front desk. You have a badass workout because you're feeling good. You're ready to go. Once you're done, you, you chat it up in the locker room with a couple of guys because this one person has a product in his hair and you say, what is that? This other guy over here has you know, toothpaste that looks like it's, it's healthy and you say, oh, what kind of product is that? Where'd you get it? I've been looking for some toothpaste like that. You go, you get some nice oatmeal, maybe get some almonds, maybe some granola, come into work, bang out an hour of sales calls, hour of maybe filming on YouTube, go into lunch and you say, listen, it's a Friday. I want to be healthy. I want to be going into the weekend feeling good. So you get some salad done with the salad, your buddy hits you up and you say, listen, 5 p.m. is a little bit early, I'm still at work, I'm still looking to get some additional business for the following week, set up my appointments, I'll meet you there at 7 or about 9 p.m. You go home around 7 o'clock, you shower, you get ready, you meet your buddy at 8.15, 8.30, he's already drunk. Girls start rolling in at 9, you've only had one drink. You see a pretty girl, you say, oh, you know what, maybe I'll say hi to her, you cheers her, nothing really happens, but then you go back to your buddy, he's really drunk, he goes home at 9.15, 9.30, maybe 10 o'clock. You start talking to that one girl that, that gave you the stiff arm in the beginning. You start hitting it off, get her number, wake up. Two scenarios. One is the micro avoidance. The micro avoidance 
of actually doing things that you actually want to do. Those are two scenarios that people are playing out in their lives every single day. Every single day. I want to talk to the cashier. I want to compliment that person. Great suit, great tie. Where'd you get that bag? Then the other person says, well, you know, I don't want to interrupt their day. I don't want to say hi. It feels weird. Other people, what do, what do other people think? You have two scenarios that compounded every single day leads into someone that I know all over at 33 years old, I can see 12 years of good habits or at least habits improving as opposed to 12 years of habits just dissipating. 1% compounded every single day is 30, 7% better or 37 times better. I don't know one of the numbers, but 1% going the other way is zero. That's zero. You did not get better. You actually got worse. So micro avoidance is walking down the street and actually saying, should I do this? Should I say this? If you keep on saying no, 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 why would you make a bold approach about asking for business or making sales calls? Why would you make a bold approach by saying, you know what, I'm not going to have another glass of wine or I'm going to choose the salad over bread or coming in to work and saying, you know what, instead of actually checking my email, checking the YouTube feed, I'm going to go online from optimize.me while eating my oatmeal instead of my cereal. I'm not going to have the hero for lunch. These micro avoidances just add up. And these are small, small, minor things. It's talking to the bouncer before going into the club. But by the way, it didn't start at the club. It started in the morning. Are you running away from something and then you can't wait to get in there and get a drink? Or are you excited about getting in there so you could talk to some females? Are you excited to going into work to, so you could prospect? It didn't start when you walked into work. It started the night before when you put out your gym clothes, you put out your work clothes, you didn't snooze your alarm, your phone was on airplane mode, you didn't check social media and email when you first woke up. And then when you woke up, you actually either meditated, you journaled, you, you visualized, you go to the gym, you talk to the person at the front desk, you talk to people in the locker room. This all adds up. That's the thing. Charles, you're so social. You're so comfortable on camera. Look at my earlier videos. I'm awkward. I'm stuttering. They have to edit me out and put in B-roll. B-roll is shots of the apartment, shots of the city, shots of the area because I, w I turned red. I stood like an idiot. My clothes looked like shit. I was a total disaster. I was a mess. I, had no I kept on forgetting my lines. I had paper all, all in my jacket saying, what do I need to say? What do I need to do? Now, when I go to an apartment, I have bullet point notes. This is what I need to cover. And then I just riff. That's not overnight, fellas and women. The micro avoidance, I'm telling you right now, lead to these macro changes that they talk about in Atomic Habit, Mini Habits, all these mini things. These mini things. You want to be more social? Say things when, you're, when your mind says, wow, that's a really nice purse. Here's an example this morning. I knew that I was, I was feeling a bit groggy. They're, they're doing this huge movie set. So when you do a movie set, you have this big row of food. So I'm walking by. I had the opportunity to actually say something or not say something. So I said, wow, look at this spread over here. It felt good for that initial fear as I'm leaving my apartment going to the gym. One guy said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, he didn't, he didn't hear me on the first time and I, I said it again. And then as I'm walking by, he goes, hey, what's up, man? I said, oh, yeah, yeah. That puts you in the mood. Then I'm making the corner or I'm making the turn to go to the subway. There's a, go to my Instagram stories. There's a massive setup for a movie. And the guy says, are you a neighbor? Yeah. He goes, okay. And I'm like, can I just walk through? And there's hundreds of people there. You know, you have hundreds of extras and then you have hundreds of people working. There's booms and mics and screens and wires everywhere. I walk right through confidently. This person on the left says, hi, I say hi to them. They have, I don't know, they're an extra with a drum. These micro avoidances, listen, I'm telling you right now, are massive. So what I do now is I am aware of when I'm actually avoiding talking to people. I'm aware when I am not doing what I want to do and it adds up all the way to the end of the night, which goes into the morning, which then goes into the next day, which goes into the next week, the next month, the year. And then at the end of the year, do you look back and you say, like this year, I look back and I said, I did three times the amount of business. I should be proud of that. But I also say, I can handle three times the amount of that. There's one thing I'm just gonna leave you with. I recently saw, and you can take it how it is, is that the ability to sit in tension, tension, T-E-N-S-I-O-N, to sit in tension is probably the, the number one factor on making money. So if you could sit there and sell yourself 
and then shut the fuck up on a date, on a job interview, asking for business over the phone or in person, pitching yourself, or just asking a question. Your ability to sit in tension is everything. You get onto an elevator, are you able to sit in silence without actually going on your phone? Why does that matter, by the way? Because when you go on your phone, you're getting stimulated, which means your brain is working over time because there's all these colors and the screen is coming at you and all this light and your brain is going, oh my God, trust me, you get, your brain gets taxed every single time you look at your screen. So can you sit on the elevator in silence and be okay with that, like right now? Is this weird to you? These micro avoidances all lead up to bigger things. Understand where you are avoiding saying something and then you say, don't beat yourself up, just say, you know what, for me to get primed, me, myself, to get primed to make sales calls, I have to do the same thing. For a good batter in baseball to hit a home run, he has to do the same thing. He has to do the same pre-game warm-up, same routine. In the batter's box, he's adjusting his gloves, his bat, he gets into the stance the exact same time, he looks at the pitcher at the exact same way because he's used to that and that's the only way. You hear it all the time, an athlete who says, I I'm just not feeling it right now. Why is he not just feeling it? Is he doing the exact same things that he should? This isn't always, by the way, but this is something that me being self-aware know that if I said nothing to that people that had a spread for their movie, I wouldn't be able to walk by that person and say, yeah, I'm just walking through the street or that and as I'm walking through the movie set, the person looks at me because it's all in your demeanor. They feel that, whatever, whatever, however you feel, someone else feels. This is one of the most important videos that you need to work on, micro avoidance. What are you avoiding on the smallest scale? A big scale is not going to the gym, not making calls, not saving money, overspending, your relationship is shit, you're not saying I love you. Those are massive things. I'm talking about the minor, small, small things. Saying no to your alarm, having your phone on airplane mode, putting out your clothes the night before. That takes, takes me 10 minutes. But in the morning, I don't want to decide because you're taxing your brain. All right, so that's enough. You guys had any questions on that, uh, just be self-aware. Self-aware, that's it. You know, Gary talks about it. That is the perfect example. I want to do something, but you don't. You don't do it again. You don't do it again. And then you start saying, wow, my confidence, my confidence. Oh my God. That's where it starts. The smallest thing. Wow, what a spread. Yeah, I'm just walking through. Perfect. Go right through. You can, you can walk through right now. All right, have an amazing day. You guys have any questions, leave in the comments below.